All right, so of course, to plot anything in a Jupyter Notebook, we'll need a data set, and we'll be using the Pandas Data Reader library to fetch it for us. So let's go ahead and fetch some information for the BlackBerry company, if you're unfamiliar. Uh, that was a huge manufacturer of business phones, smartphones, way back in 2007, 2008. They were basically the biggest company in the market. And then they basically took a huge nosedive. So this is the kind of story uh, that a picture can tell much more effectively than just looking through months and months of stock information. So let's go ahead and pull in the stock information for BlackBerry from Google. So I'm going to use my data word here. I'm going to use the data reader method in there. And as a reminder, this method takes four parameters, name, uh, which is going to reflect the company that we want to pull information for, its stock name rather. The data source uh, is what online resource we're pulling the information from, and then a start date and an end date. So for name, I'm going to provide BlackBerry stock name, which is BBRY. Our data source is going to be Google, lowercase, that just indicates Google Finance. And for the start, I want to begin in July 1st, 2007. So right around the time that BlackBerry was at its peak. And then I want to end at the end of 2008, so December 31st, 2008. And I want to assign this result to a variable called BB, just short for BlackBerry, and then preview the first three rows just so we ensure that the data set loaded properly. So let's give it a second to run. And there we have our data set starting on July 2nd, which must have been, it looks like... It's interesting it's missing the fourth here. Of course, it was closed that day because of July 4th. So it looks like the second represents a Monday, and it's starting from that Monday. So now let's go and see what happens when we call the plot method directly on the data frame. So the plot method is pretty much the, the central method that we can use to plot a, a pandas object using matplotlib. So let's see what happens if we just do bb.plot and forget about any of the parameters for just a second. So you can see, because of that matplotlib inline uh, command that we wrote in the last lesson, we are getting the chart to render within the notebook, which is exactly what we wanted. So let's see what happened here. On the bottom here, on the uh, x-axis, you can see that we have the months represented. Now, if I scroll back up, we'll see that the dates here in my index are actually stored in uh, by date. So uh, pandas and matplotlib are smart enough to basically take these values and group them into months and basically figure out the details of how it's going to space them apart uh, by itself. So we don't even have to worry about the fact that it's dates. Uh, pandas and matplotlib are going to represent it as months. Now the other key thing to notice, of course, is that the x-axis here has been formed by the values of the index of the uh, pandas data frame that I'm working with. So the index values have become my x values here. You can see date is what my index is consisting of. And then we're also going to see something really interesting here, which is you may be looking at this chart, and then you may be looking at this legend, and you can see that volume is represented by this purple line, and it seems to be the only one that is uh, physically present on this graph, which may lead you to conclude that it only graphed the volume component. In reality, it did plot all five of our columns. We can see the values right here, all five uh, column headers. And those five column headers are represented here in the legend. So where are all of these other values? Well, it turns out, if we look at the data set, our values for the stock prices, the open, high, low, and close, are generally in you know the couple of hundreds. So they're in the 200s, maybe the 300s, and the 100s, while the values in our volume column are in the millions. So what's actually happening here is, in order to fit the values from every single column in within this single rendering, uh, Pandas has to scale up, and this it has to basically go into the millions on the y-axis right here. So because the values in the volume column are so massive, they're basically dwarfing all of the other values uh, in the other columns, which are very minuscule, very small in comparison. So these four lines, open, high, low, and close, are actually stacked in the bottom here. If you look closely, you can see that they're all kind of just flatlined there at the bottom. They're not visible because all of those little changes between $200 versus $210 are not really visible on a chart where the y-axis is adjusted to go into the tens of millions. So this single volume uh, column is basically dwarfing all the others and basically rendering the whole plot essentially useless unless we want to focus on volume. So unless we have a data frame where all of the values are of an equal magnitude, it's very uh, rare that I'll find myself using the plot method on the entire data frame as a whole. Usually I'll be focusing on a specific column, and there's two ways that you can do that. The first, as you might expect, is with a a parameter. So if I go back up here, and I'm going to go click back inside my parentheses and finally take a look at my options here, 
see if I can expand it a bit. Here it is. So we have this Y parameter here, which specifies what column you want to place as the values of the Y axis. That's the horizontal axis. You, of course, can provide a argument for the X parameter right next to it, and that's going to uh, set the values on the X axis. But in this case, I'm happy with the dates. I'm happy with the default setting of the index, which is my dates right here. So I really just want to provide a value for Y. And let's say I want to do uh, just try a couple different columns here. So of course, if I do something like volume, we're going to get something very similar. We're going to get a chart right here. You can see this one is only going to have a single value in the legend because we're no longer plotting all five. We're just plotting volume. And you can see here that uh, it's been correctly plotted. And here are all their dates at the bottom. However, if I want to take a look at something that's on a much smaller scale, let's say the high price, which is in the hundreds, if I replace this volume with high, that Y parameter is basically saying take the values from the high column and use those as the Y values uh, right here uh, in the rendered plot. So when I execute this, we're going to get the stock's high price over the course of uh, basically a year and a quarter. We can see starting here from, from September 2007 to November 2008. And now instead of sifting through potentially you know, 400, 500 days of stock data, immediately a story begins to emerge thanks to this plot. We can see that BlackBerry's price was hovering around you know, 210, 220 right here in early September 2007. And then by the end of the year in 2008, it was already below 50. So it's a huge drop. We can see it occur right around here, this massive fall um, at, right around October 2007. So immediately the chart communicates way better than a data frame could. So uh, that's one way that we could plot a, um, a single column on a pandas plot or basically a matplotlib plot. The alternative to this syntax is something a little bit different. And the way that matplotlib works actually is that if you put multiple plotting commands within a single cell, it's actually going to plot all of them on top of each other. So I can't just uh, utilize my default operation, which is writing my code right below and having it only render the last part. So I'm just going to replace this code with what I want to uh, do right now, which is show you the second option. So instead of calling plot on the entire data frame as a whole, you can just call it on the specific series that you want to plot. So for example, if I wanted to check out the close uh, column and, and perform a plot of that, I can simply extract it with my familiar bracket syntax. There I have my close series. It's kept the index of my data frame, which is my date time index right here. And here are the values from close. And now I can call plot directly. And because it's a series, it basically knows it has two values. This doesn't need any additional parameters. Pandas is automatically going to use the index here as the x-axis and the values from the series as the y-axis. And there we have the exact same thing. This chart has been rendered below the cell, and we can see that everything is working. As another example, if I just wanted to show you volume again, I can simply extract volume and then call the plot method on that series. And then we're going to get um, the volume plotted. And of course, if I want to extract more than one uh, column, all I have to do is use the list here. And let's, let's extract two columns that are fairly similar in magnitude. So let's say I want to extract both the high and the low for the day. So I'm going to wrap that within a list within my square brackets. So there is my new data frame, but now the values within these columns are much closer. So no values are going to dwarf the other ones. And now I can call plot on the smaller data frame and you can see that the legend now makes a little bit more sense. We can see the green, which indicates the low, and we can see the, the blue, which indicates the high, and kind of see how they scale uh, over, over this uh, time range. So that's the plot method. It's a very quick introduction. We're going to dive into a lot of different options that are available, um, but it's just a quick introduction to how seamlessly and easy it is to tell pandas to communicate with matplotlib and essentially render this plot, in this case a line graph, that indicates this trend over time. And you may be looking at this and saying, okay, that's pretty fine, but it's not really the prettiest thing. So in the next lesson, we'll talk about how we can modify the aesthetics of these renderings by utilizing some of the built-in templates available in Pandas and Matplotlib. So I'll see you there.